I have not heard yet from anyone say that they practiced sparring against another robot. We did some sparring with Duck. We've also since done some sparring in parking lots with hijinks. So lo taking advantage of local teams to practice with. Way back when the, the first robot was even a concept, Aaron's like, how do I make my face so strong that someone punching it hurts their fist? And like, that is, that is the weapon. And then that plan went out the window when the spinner decided it wanted to die in the first collision with them. All right, well, we got no weapon. So I'm a brick. Let's go. <laughs> Gave a great quote for one of my teammates, this is Brian Culver, who also used to work at Bex. Uh, this, this is the quote of every, everyone's got a plan to get punched in the face. And his quote was, strategy gets a lot easier when you're comfortable taking the opponent's weapon to your face repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm having a tantrum and we're going to talk to him too. On this episode of Behind the Battle. Hey everyone, we're on with Jason and Aaron from Team Tantrum. How's it going, guys? Going pretty well. Excited watching the season so far. I think the show's actually turned out real, real great this year. It's been a lot of fun watching it, and it's it's going great, honestly. It's definitely a lot nicer when your robot's doing better. How did you get to BattleBots, Aaron? Hmm. <clears throat> so this it actually started back when I was down at Bex and we were in Texas. Mm -hmm. the, the complicated story and the more lighthearted light -hearted story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so season one on ABC of the reboot uh, showed up and we had we got a group of friends together and we basically had grilled cheese battle bots night watching it and I went, we could do this. I'm dumb and think this is easier than it looks. Got a, got a group of people together. <laughs> Uh, did a full design submission and everything. Um, and we knew it was possible, like we knew Hexbug was looking at making the toys. So we knew it was possible we wouldn't be allowed to. Mm. Um, but we went all the way through applying for season two, um, got a spot, had not had the okay and everything. And then <clears throat> with a couple months out, happily we had not started building yet, which was pro retros, well, definitely pro in retrospect, but uh, a con with where we should have been at that point in time. The, the toy contract was signed, so we were not eligible. So we could not compete in season two. And then there was that year break between um, ABC and Discovery. And in that time frame, I moved out. A friend pulled me out here to a company in California for surgical robot stuff. And I got the, I got a ping later that it was coming back in Discovery from, from Greg mm -hmm. and went, yeah, all right, let's do this. Like I wanted to do it then, still want to do it now. Let's go and managed I, I have a lot of a lot of friends and contacts i've made uh through working on a lot of robot projects etc jason included and a couple of couple other friends and went for it for season three then uh ambitious but rubbish is the best summation of season three uh <laughs> but it got us it got us enough street cred to open up some doors later jason how did you get into this group if you see the mystical coattails riding off of aaron i grabbed one of those and as he's like, hey, I got this crazy design, I'm like, that is crazy. Let's do it. It's been awesome because uh, any kid growing up, at least with our background, watching BattleBots, that's what you want to do. It's that, that's awesome. That's the coolest thing you could possibly do. So, yeah, when he when we were both uh, eligible and he kicked back off, hey, let's try it again. It's like, uh, absolutely. I want to go back down there. Um, especially um, during the toy release, we got to meet a lot of the builders during that time. And it's like, oh, these are more awesome people who do awesome things. We should find a way to get back there so we can keep hanging out with all these cool people. And so the easiest thing to do obviously was to develop a whole new battle bot and go down to California and <laughs> compete again, or compete for the first time. Jason, in your time here at Hexbug, you actually helped build some of the BattleBots toys. Which ones did you work on? At that time, we were actually, we explored the original development of it. So this was like the breaking ground, taking existing Hexbugs, chopping them up. We would, uh, we had quadcopter motors that were ridiculously overpowered. And then slowly that worked into uh, the contract with actual battle, battle bots. And we went from we had, uh, they were called Ripsaw and Rhino, and they were kind of a Bronco and kind of a Tombstone to, hey, now we're gonna make Tombstone. So um, at the time I was, the, I did the original design work for um, the unreleased Bronco. I didn't uh, quite finish that up. Uh, Witch Doctor and Tombstone, um, and then eventually Minotaur. Um, so kind of the the first and second generations of the toys. Where did the idea for Tantrum come from? 
So the puncher was motivated by a few things. One was making a robot that was nice to itself. The, the spring, the titanium spring flipper was not very kind to itself mm. from a system level perspective. Every time it dry fired, it broke stuff. Uh, so we were looking at other options and came up with one of the ideas of basically trying to play the strategic middle ground between the flipper and a vertical spinner, mm. while also the good parts of being like a brick and a wedge of just really durable. Mm -hmm. uh, we know the field is full of really gnarly spinners and you do need to be able to survive them. So being able to keep the weapon tucked at the back and engage with the front and control and push people around was important and take all hits all day up there. And then the other part is uh, it allows us to have more more control and weapon engagement. And this is the, the theory. This, it pans out okay sometimes. Oftentimes you see robots shooting a lot of sparks, grinding off of opponents. That's not really doing any damage. It's all just superficial, glanc like glancing blows for the most part. So the idea is with that linear travel in our own robot, we can be shoved up against somebody, like pinned them against the wall, etc., and punch. Then get good bite to not be making sparks, but actually getting a solid chunk and throwing the other robot some. I think that's such a unique idea for a weapon. And I, it's not like nothing I'd ever seen before. And last year when you told me about it, I was just like, what even, how is it a puncher? But it literally spins and then wrecks like, like a wind up, like boom, like punch right out. Now the, the Gamma 9 fight's a pretty good demonstration. And there's some great after, we have some great photos. We'll probably have posted by the time this is up. Um, I've taken of the chunks and just tooth shaped chunks coming right out of them. What's new for Tantrum this season? Uh, we did this weird thing where we went, okay, let's take a thing and build on it as opposed to starting new again. Mm -hmm. uh, re revise and like take learnings and improve for the second iteration. A lot of the biggest focuses design-wise were for serviceability. That is basically to guarantee that the robot is always at 100% going into a fight. And then also weapon reach and a self raider. So the, if you notice the weapon sticks out a fair amount farther out the front of the robot to, you know, actually touch the opponent. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also ended up two matches last year, one at BattleBots, one at King of Bots in China, um, losing a match upside down. So we added a separate self raider and uh, had solid aspirations of having fancy flamethrower fists on it. But after the first fight, uh, when the flamethrower bits got ripped off and stuck underneath us and we wanted to fit more battery, those were the first things to get cut to fit more battery and also to not beach us on our own robot parts. So therefore, tiny fists for life. <laughs> and Tantrum is so fast, so fast. And like the driving ability, like in the in the Adam 94 fight, you're <laughs> like all over underneath, like over. Well, Mac. Really, that was a big push this year and this season was, you know, um, Tantrum, even just drivetrain wise, we we've had a really cool and creative uh, driveline in the past, but one of its it just it couldn't handle the box. Once you got in the box and it got tossed around, it started to fail. So um, uh, Aaron really, they, they did an incredible job simplifying our drivetrain design while maximizing power. And uh, like after that, we, we kind of joke, but we're like, it's more RC car. Like you can just take it, throw it down and go. And, and on, on top of that, Aaron, I think you got a ton more practice. It shows like your, your driving ability from just how Tantrum performs to how you react to situations, how quick you self right, how quick you get back into there. It's just, it's a night and day difference. Like I, I, I'm proud of it. Thanks man. Yeah, we, we took a lot of the extra time uh, due to the delay. And actually I had a couple of teammates, uh, college kids who were home for the summer, Will and James, help out motiv motivation and just maintenance wise for swapping, charging batteries, swapping tires and driving opponent robots and coming up with practice schemes, etc. <clears throat> um, and we got like nine hours of drive practice. Um, that included like full on bashing against the prototype robot we had. We did some sparring with Duck. We've also since done some sparring in parking lots with hijinks. So lo taking advantage of local teams to practice with. I, I credit a lot of how, <laughs> if it looks solid in the box, it's all stuff that was enabled by doing that practice. And the other thing is the confidence that built. Um, I could run the thing full speed into curbs over and over again and nothing died. It was nine hours with no mechanical or electrical issues which means when I take take the controller in a match, it's like, it's fine. So seeing the robot flying through the air in the Adam 94 fight, like, 
That'd be fine. This right here is a crazy new perspective that I'm just now learning about because everyone that I've talked to before is like, no time for practice. It's build and get in, get in the battle box because we got to go. <laughs> and to, nine hours of practice time is a dramatic difference from like almost anyone else we've talked to. I have not heard yet from anyone say that they practiced sparring against another robot. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome. The, one of the other nice parts, and this is a pro like the flip was the actual sorry the actual spinner on tantrum is not very big. Uh, it's mm -hmm. only like eighteen pounds. Yeah. So spinning at full tilt on the occasions where I do let it get spinning, it barely lifts the wheel. So gyro doesn't really affect much. So that means the practice from the parking lot translates very well to the to the box. You can tell in the first couple of fights of ours, uh, you definitely drive how you practice, and we practice without a weapon spinning. Um, so therefore, driving was practicing basically playing like a wedge. Um, so the Valkyrie and the Adam 94 fight, I didn't really hold back the driving to let the weapon get spun up. Um, it was, I'm on top of and controlling them, let's go. And then the Gamma 9 fight, it was like, showing up restraint to let the weapon spin up to actually get hits. Great. I don't think I could say it anymore, but uh, season three and season four were pretty much newcomers and had a steep learning curve to try competing with big dogs. Um, so that the practice this last summer definitely helped a lot with that, um, catching up to where, to where some of the other top drivers are. A couple of days ago, we talked to Aaron and Jason from Team Tantrum, and they mentioned that you guys actually got to have a sparring match. Tell me about that. What we really wanted to do was test not just the tail, but also the new drive setup. Because we had a couple of gremlins in the drive system this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a couple of them sorted out right away. And then we had new gremlins. So, you know, if you, if you fix a mechanical issue, you can chase it right into the electrical system. And that kind of happened to us. Yeah. So we've got um, three potential drive solutions on deck. And we want to be able to test all three and see what we like best. But it's not quite the same just running your robot around a parking lot. It, you kind of need to run it into stuff. And it, it also helps uh, as a driver to run it into people who are doing the same thing. <laughs> so it's like, it's simultaneously, we want to get um, Orion good driving practice because he's a very good driver, but practice always helps. Uh, we definitely want to test out new ideas that we can put on the robot before we go to, to fabrication and manufacturing. And in the particular, we wanted to test the drive and see if we could lock down the drive issues and then never have the drive fail ever again. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope we get to do it again as well. We're, um, we're now we have the new drive kind of on deck, uh, just about how we want it. So we're getting ready to go do some testing. So I hope they're up for another match. That was, that was useful for both of us. That was good. It's time to talk about the fight with Bloodsport. Tell me about this fight. Going into this one, uh, we just watched them face Gruff uh, and actually break their, their big tri bar, which is their heaviest, gnarliest weapon, I think, for them. So we knew that one was out of place. And I was like, what are they going to use? I don't think any really changes what we do, but I don't know. Let's see. Um, we were excited to, uh, I'm going to say, hit something solid. A lot of the testing we did with the puncher was against a, an old billet frame, a big block of aluminum. So we're excited to be able to like have a chance to punch something that is really solid. Mm -hmm. um, we did some armor modifications, uh, kind of mimicking what Gruff did. We referred to them as Gruff bars, welded to the front of the armor of just, here's more steel. Like hit it as much as you want, it'll be fine. So we're excited going into the fight to like have a chance to hit a really solid target and like get them popped up. <clears throat> and then that plan went out the window when the spinner decided it wanted to die in the first collision with them. Uh, which is not something <laughs> I want or plan for. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, we got no weapon. So I'm a brick. Let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> basically proceed to take him around the box, keep ramming face into the weapon. We're, basically, we're trying to make their weapon die too, because from yeah. a damage perspective, it doesn't look great if we're the only ones with a dead weapon. We did not take out their weapon, but I did manage to use the box pretty well uh, for getting some solid pulverizer hits that bent off bent and made their self radar tube really sad which isn't that much damage but it aesthetically looks like when you look at the two robots one of them looks okay but the weapon won't spin the other one's missing i think at the other match they're missing one tire their wedgelets and their self radar tube was super bent down so one robot looked sadder at the end of the match despite the fact its weapon still worked and everything's dry still worked so as soon as the weapon died it was a battle for i need to be 
100% the aggressor on driving and I need to have control over them and we got to score some damage points because we can't risk having all five points go to them and manage to pull that off. Um, I've so when working at Vex, I get to be a field tech at Vex Worlds. Uh, that gives you a certain level of respect for Vex drivers. Some of them are nuts. Uh, Jack and Justin included in this as former Vex competitors. So that's another one going into the fight. I'm like, all right, he's got a pretty solid drivetrain. And I've seen some of the robots he's made and driven for Vex stuff. Oh boy, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Um, I do not have have as many hours driving robots as they do mm. by a long stretch. I Vex teams are ridiculous. So that was another one going to this match. Like, I'm gonna see how this goes. And pulled pulled off the win. It's all about what you do. Like when you when you get it, like you're you're dealt a hand and you gotta do what you can with that hand. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I gave a great quote from one of my teammates, this is Brian Culver, who also used to work at Vex. Mm. Um <clears throat> Uh, there's, there's the quote of every, everyone's got a plan to get punched in the face. That's, his quote was, strategy gets a lot easier when you're comfortable taking the opponent's weapon to your face repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, I got no weapon. Here's my face. Break their hand on your face. Like, it, yeah. it's perfect that, strategy. That's back to the original, like way back when the, the first robot was even a concept. Aaron's like, how do I take up like how do i make my face so strong that someone punching it hurts their fist and like that is that is the weapon and it's like that's ridiculous but you have a point and it's odd because the fist is on tantrum <laughs> right <laughs> but we still use our face <laughs> aaron and jason thank you guys so much for joining me today i can't wait to see what tantrum comes up with in the rest of the season and we'll talk to you guys very soon it's been a blast chatting with the <laughs> company we both used to work at and love it's been great chatting thanks a lot for talking with us i mean really this is why we we do it each year is it's our only way to get a chance to talk uh back with uh, uh vex and, and Hexbug. so you know we'll just keep building battle lots so we can have these interviews join us next time for more exclusive interviews on the vex robotics channel and make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a second of the action thanks for watching